me. Uh, welcome, um, welcome to Building the Rock. It's good to be here. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you, Joe. I, I want to call you Pastor Joe. I mean, God might be speaking something. But hey, uh, it's really good to be back. I really miss this place. There are so many memories. Uh, just, just coming in here, seeing all those rocks, like each one of those rocks symbolize people praying hours and hours and hours. And uh, just, uh, just, I'm so thankful for the, the ride, the journey I had being here at Building on the Rock. Um, in, many, in some ways, I wish I was still here, but you know, God sent me down south um, to Main Street Alliance Church, and I'm there as an assistant pastor with, uh, with my family. There's my wife, Sarah. We got four, four my beautiful wife, Sarah. We got four beautiful children. Uh, three of them are in there. Uh, Ayla, who's six years old. Uh, Raina, who's four. Kairos, who's two. And Isaac, who's five months. So it's good to have them here with me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just so grateful for my time here at Building on the Rock. I got so many stories I could share with you if, if you... You want to, I, was, I was like, oh, is he going to share something, <laughs> share some kind of silly story or something? You never know, because I was, I, was, I was a quirky guy. I still am. But, um, but yeah, it's so good to be here. We're going to be in Ephesians 5 talking about being imitators of, of God. I've heard you, you guys are um, diving into the book of Ephesians. And so just thinking about what it means to be an imitator of God, just thinking of my children. I mean, a lot of us here work with kids, right? We have children, grandchildren of our own. I remember here when I was at Building on the Rock years ago, and we had this uh, prayer service in the morning, and we were, like, sharing, like, God encounters. And, uh, you know, my daughter, uh, Ayla, she, she was, like, I think one and a half or two or something like that, and she always wanted to help me out with the dishes and everything like that. And I was just like, I got to get these dishes done. I got to go to bed. I got things to do. We were... My wife and I were both going to work, um, but she just wanted to be with her daddy. She just wanted to help her daddy. And I, I, for, for a bunch of times, you know, I kind of let her help a little bit, but then just get her watching some TV or whatever. And then God was, spoke to me, and he's like, listen, how she is, she just wants to be with you. She wants to imitate you. She loves you. She wants to be where you're at. You need to be more like her. You need to be where God is at. You need to have that same heart. And that happened, that, that God speaking that to me happened right here at Building on the Rock dur- during an early prayer service. And it just kind of hit me, and I was like, oh, I got to let my kids come on in more. I, got this, I only got so much time, and I got to be like a child with God who just want to be where God's at um, and imitate him. So, but yeah, I mean, it, again and again, like, I'm just learning this, that children imitate those around them. They're so impressionable. They, they, um, they want to be like their older siblings. I, had, I did this, this um, addition in my uh, garage, made a bedroom, because uh, it was getting a little tight in there when we had company visiting. Both my parents, both our parents live far away. So I made a little bedroom out of the garage. I was putting up uh, insulation, and I was like, I, this, is, this is, I'm doing this. But here comes Ayla knocking at the door. I was like, oh, I guess she can cut insulation. I was like, we got some masks. Thank you, COVID. Uh, so I put her on the mask, got her some, got her some snow gloves from the, from the closet, and she was cutting the insulation. And then we, then we put it up. Um, you can go to the next slide. My little two-year-old wanted to help out. I was like, all right, just come on in for a little bit. You can put down the floor. Thank you, Pastor Dave. You, he, he, helped me, he helped me learn how to do flooring. Uh, we go way back, but uh, yeah, he helped, he helped me put in the floor, um, and, there, and there they are when, on some other time, doing construction with their play toys, uh, Raina and, and Kairos. But yeah, this is what Jesus talked about many times. He, Jesus talked about children. In Matthew 18, he said, um, he said that the, you know, the, the disciples are arguing, and they were, they were asking Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And so Jesus called a child to come to him and stand in front of them and said, I assure you that unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven is the one who humbles himself and becomes like this child. And whoever welcomes them in my name, one such child welcomes me. 
And diving into Ephesians 5.1, it says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Beloved children. So it's right there. Like, man, we, we, we need to become more like children. We need to look at God. Look for God. Listen up to God so that we can become like him, so that we can reach others. To be an imitator of God means I know to, need to know him. Uh, and, you know, I think for all of us, like, that's kind of a high calling, right? To be like God. I mean, we, this, this, we know this world's messed up, and I know I'm messed up. Do you know you're messed up, right? You, when, you, when you see the inward attitudes and the things that lurk in your heart, and sometimes, it, it, sometimes only you know how, how, how much you fall short of being, being like God, like Jesus. But, and a, but a lot of times, too, other people who are close to you, especially family and such, they know, they know that, you, that you're a work in progress. That you don't look like a Christian many times. You don't look like a follower of Jesus. I want to tell you about one of my experiences because... Uh, I think we can all relate to it. I remember a few years ago, um, for, for years I've been like a bivocational pastor and I've, I've done construction and painting and things like that. I still do that. But a few years ago I was painting on LPI and I remember this time when I just, um, I blew up at a coworker of mine. I was trying to give my best. My boss was a Christian. I was trying to make Jesus known. Uh, we had a new hire and he was from, the, he was from Main Street. And, um, you know, he just right away, like, I, I love the guy. We've done ministry together and stuff. It's not you, Pastor Dave, right? <laughs> oh, he's not here. Just for saying. Because we, we worked at the same painting company, all right? Just put you at ease. But this, this kid, he had, a, he had a terrible work ethic. And so I tried to have, like, those one-on-one -on -one talks, like, hey, man, there's so many people that don't believe in Jesus. I wanted him to become a good painter I wanted his work ethic to improve so he can get a raise. I also wanted him to be on, on the team of making Jesus known with me because I knew it was more than just painting. I was serving God. And so, but it just didn't seem like anything was getting through to him. It had been a few weeks. And one of these days I came into work and I was stressed about other things. Maybe it was my kids not, maybe it was getting in a fight with my wife or Maybe it was uh, I was sick or something like that, or it was my kids. I don't remember. But I was stressed about some other stuff. And once again, here he is. He's, he's on his phone a bunch while he's working. He's like taking an hour lunch break. He's missing all these spots that he's supposed to be painting and stuff. He's dripping paint on the floor. All those different things are coming up again. And I, you know, I, 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 told, I got a little short with him when I tried to correct him. Because I was and my tone was off. And, and he just responded. He just hit right back at me. And his, his, his bad attitude set me off. And then my voice started to raise. His voice started to raise. I'm lecturing him. We start arguing. Insults are flying. It got so loud in that house that the carpenter from upstairs who was putting up trim, he came downstairs. And he says, yo, Nate, you got to take it easy. Come on. Come on. We're all here working. And... Uh, and at that moment, I just was like, oh. And my heart dropped, and I just was like, I just needed to take a break. It just, so I just ran out of the building. Well, I didn't run, but I walked out of the building. And I just started to like, just pace back and forth and just like, think of, like, man, how did this happen? And, and I was, in, in my mind, I was, you know, I was telling all these excuses to myself. I have every reason to be angry. I'm right. This kid needs to be fired. And then my boss, uh, who's like on the third floor or something, he ends up hearing about it from the carpenter. And then he comes out to me. He's like, hey, like, you know, you're a Christian. You're a pastor. You know, the people know about it. Like, what's going on? You got to have some grace for this guy. He's like, I understand he's a bad worker too. But I got to have someone do something. I can't, I can't find anyone to hire. And so, so I go back in there and do the right thing. I repent to, I repent to my friend my brother in Christ. I, I, I tell him my heart. And then I'm like, I guess I got to go repent to the carpenters too. I, I'm going to be a bad witness. I'm not, I don't look nothing like, like Jesus right now. So I go, up to, I go up to the carpenter and say, hey, I'm sorry for all that. 
you know, please forgive me. That shouldn't happen. And he's like, oh, I understand. He's like, it's happened to me. He's like, I've been there. And so I just want to ask you, you know, I know there's a bunch of us here who've, who've been in construction or something like that. Some, but how, can you relate to my experience where you've, where you've failed to imitate God? And, um, you know, I know for myself, I'm usually an easygoing guy. But there's, there's some people that throw me off. My coworkers, my kids, my wife. So many people could throw me off and because they don't meet my expectations, my agenda. And I think we all could be really selfish, right? And, and then that selfishness, that pride, if we don't correct it, if we don't repent, it just kind of leads us down a broken path. And then it's like, like it happened to me. I want to take it even further, you know, in what areas, in what areas have we struggled to imitate God? Just think about it. Like I said, your marriage, your significant other, your kids, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. What about in areas we struggle with what we consume? Social media, gossip, what music we listen to, what movies, TV we watch, eating and drinking to the excess what the culture tells us we need to do and how we need to act. So my question for us that we're going to discover in the scripture today, Ephesians, is how do we imitate and follow Jesus in the everyday moments of life with where he puts us, what people he puts us around us? So let's look at what God's answer to the question is. But before we do that, let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you're here. I thank you that you want to speak a message to me, to all of us, God, to, to, to become more like you, not out of a striving and trying, 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 but to become more like you because you live in us, because you're working your good grace in us. And so I pray that we would hear that message, God, that, you're, that your love, that your spirit changes us. And so help us to walk this out, God. Help us to hear from you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you can turn on your Bibles or you can look up on the screen. Sorry, it's a little bit small. I should have had uh, my media person make some slides. Um, We're going to start at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetedness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God has come upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers of them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find Find out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So how do we imitate and follow Jesus in the everyday moments of our life? We walk in love. We walk in love. You look at verse 1, you know, Paul starts out by using therefore to tell the Ephesus church. Now he's writing from prison, but he's trying to to really blow wind in their cells, really inspire them as as they're developing, as they're growing in their faith. He tells the Ephesus church that because of these things, that you just heard me talk about in those past four chapters in that letter, take action. There's got to, an action is required. And then Paul then uses the word walk. Because back in those days, 
Walking was like just what they did. Yeah, they had, some, they had some camels, they had some horses and things like that. But life was filled with walking. People didn't just get out of the car and walk into the store. No, they had to like walk some miles to the store, most, unless they were really, really rich. They'd have to walk into the city to get to the marketplace to get what they needed. They walked miles and miles for some like event or for work. And we all know that walking is, is about moving forward for a specific purpose, right? We're to be intentional in life. We're not just to be waiting for something to happen, but God is telling us, walk in love, be intentional. That means we got to turn away from our sin, repent, and we got to turn to God for his love to shine through. And it's, it's a part of our mission here, um, reaching others, right? But walking in love means loving God and loving others. It's, it's the greatest commandment. And we lack love because we don't repent often. And that's why uh, when I just read that passage, Paul is like listing all these sin areas, right? So what's your struggle? What's, what's your struggle with walking in love? I know discontentment has been a struggle from mine. I forget God's love. I forget how much he's blessed me. Sometimes it's a comparison game that I'm making in my mind towards others, and I get envious of what they have and what I don't have. Other times I'm not getting through to my kids or I'm fighting with my wife, and I start to go down pity party lane right? And I forget how blessed I am. And I forget that I've made sacrifices. I've made my bed. I've made choices in my life as a called man of God to not be going, spending thousands and thousands of dollars going on vacation for three weeks or whatever it be. Not that anything, any of that is wrong, but this is sometimes how discontentment works in my life. And so when I find myself down a pity party lane, what do I need to do? Therefore, I choose to repent and make a change. I got to turn on some worship music and sing. I got to pray in the morning and evening and at meals to have a rhythm of thankfulness and not just check it off the list. All right, let's pray. Right, kids, come on, let's pray. All right, all right. But make it mean something. Remember that he died on the cross. Real communion. I got to look at my spouse. I got to look at my children. My coworkers, my friends who God has placed around me and thank God for them. So when you find yourself down a similar road, what do you need to do? How do we imitate God? Walk in love. Second thing is walk in the light. Verse 7 through 14. You know, Paul speaks about walking in the light as a life of transparency transparency. He says, expose him, expose him. And he speaks about walking in the light as a desire to please God. And so if, if we're really in the light of God, there's going to be evidence of God's growth in us. In my backyard, um, I, I got woods like encroaching on my backyard. And so every summer, you know, I keep trying to, to grow zucchini plants. My, one of my daughters loves zucchini and I just kind of got into it. Lately, thank you, Aldi. So I'm, you know, I got a new. I just bought a house a few years ago, so I'm like, let's let's do a garden. This is a dad thing to do. This is a family thing to do. Let, let me let me just try. I got some pots and things like that. So I just started out with like garden plants and pots. So I'm trying to grow some zucchini. Are there any other gardeners out there? Right? Yeah. Well, you know, no matter what I do, they don't seem to grow well. I get like one or two zucchinis, like you know a few weeks, maybe like a month after I plant the thing. And you know why they don't grow well? I got a shady backyard. I got a shady backyard. And they're just supposed to be in full sun. It actually says that on the packet of seeds. <laughs> full sun! I'm like, oh, full sun, you know, six hours, that's good enough. Let me try again this year. And so I, I keep, I, I, I move them around. I move them around one place. I made a little garden bed here. I'm like, ah, oh, this will be a little better. Nope. Every spot I put them in is still shady because my 
my whole backyard is just shady. You get some sun, but I, mo- I moved around my pool because it was so shady this past year. Do you see the zucchini? They need light to grow. It's the same for us. We need to be in the light to grow. The fruit of the Spirit, it grows in the light of God's truth, knowing his will, and, and then being transparent. And that means like confessing our sins. There has to be the light of God's truth, like really getting into us, and then that obedience for the growth to happen. You think of the fruit of the Spirit. It comes when, when he is in you, when he's filling you up. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I mean, that's an inventory right there, right? And so if, if, we, if you aren't seeing results, something's wrong, and you need to get transparent. You need to take some inventory of your heart of your relationships, of what you're consuming. And God's going to show you. You start to pray, God's going to show you the reality of your heart and where you need to change. Transparency means that you don't hide your struggles or sin, but you say, God, convict me. Break my heart for what breaks you. What is going on? Where have I went wrong? And, And he'll do it. His Holy Spirit, he is good. He will lead you. James 5.16 clearly says, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. God tells us that while our relationship with him is personal, it's not private. Because we're the body. What we do in our personal lives affects our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're called to expose a struggle not only to God, but to those trusted leaders and those brothers and sisters that God's given us, right? This means that we gotta, we gotta get honest. We gotta talk about our sin struggle with a, with a repentant heart and a desire to change. So ask yourself, you know, when was the last time you had an honest talk with Jesus or a close Christian friend about that struggle? And to follow up with that question, were you just complaining, venting? We all do that, right? Or did you desire to change? I'm going to play a song for you. So bear with me. I, I, I do sound a little bit weird. You can probably tell. So hopefully my voice won't crack or cough in the middle of it. But uh, it's, it's a song that inspired me when I was young. It's called In the Light by DC Talk. Um, and uh, it's just a great inspirational song about just being an imitator of God and that struggle that struggle where you want to do God's will, but then there's a, there's, there's a sinful nature. There's the, the pull of the culture. There's, all, there's the devil attacking you, but yet you got the Holy Spirit. You got, you got the word of God. You got the family of God. So you got these force, and they're trying to get you on, one force trying to get you on the dark side, one force trying to get you on the light side. And so, it's such a transparent song. I just wanted to play it a little bit for you. You can uh, flip out over the other side. Uh, the, the, other, um, the, other pay, the other slide. And it's got the lyrics. Excuse me. I might forget the lyrics, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to pull them up. Does it sound good? Is that a good sound check? Yeah? Okay, cool. Right on. I keep trying to find a life on my own, apart from you. I am the king of excuses. I've got one for every selfish thing I do. Tell me what's going on inside of me. I despise my own behavior. This only serves to confirm my suspicion that I'm still a man in need of a savior. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like the stars in the heavens. Oh Lord, be my light and be my salvation. All I want is to be in the light. 
All I want is to be in the light. The leaves of self run through my blood. It's a cancer fatal to my soul. Every attempt of my behalf has failed to bring the sickness under control. Tell me what's going on inside of me. I despise my own behavior. This only serves to confirm my suspicion that I'm still a man in need of a savior. Want to be in the light. As you are in the light, I want to shine like the stars in the heavens. Oh Lord, be my light and be my salvation. All I want is to be in the light. All I want is to be in the light. Oh, yes, I do. All I want is to be in the light. In the light, 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 yeah. All right. I would need a little help to end that song like, like, like my friends ZC Talk do. No, they're not my friends, but they're my brothers and sisters in Christ. But, um. But yeah, just to close, I've lived in the darkness before. And you know what? It's only brought me shame and death. I've seen others walk in the darkness and destroy all the good God had brought into their lives. But you know what? When I've come out of the darkness and into the light and seen others do the same, it's a miracle. What would happen if we collectively Building on the Rock, Main Street Alliance, Riverside Chapel, alive again. What would happen if we collectively, as a worldwide church, walk in the light of God's love and truth? That he chose us before the creation of the world to be set apart as an example to follow. We'd see the next generations, right? The next generations follow us as we follow Christ. We change the world And you know what? That's the kind of church that I want to be a part of. So let's keep walking with a purpose. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we want to be in the light. We want to walk in your love. We can't do this life without you, God. It will get us nowhere. We have decided to follow you, to walk with you. No turning back. Lord, I just pray, God, that... uh, that this message, God, will just ring, ring through. Lord, that it just, it'll just kind of like just haunt us in a good way. That we'll just remember that we are loved. And that, you, that we've got your power. We've got you to pick us up when we fail. I pray, God, that we'll, we'll have that kind of love from you. And that it'll be passed on to others. And we'll have that kind of light to, to get real. To not be afraid to look weak. Because we've got the body of Christ and we've got you. And that we'll just carry on, God, and see a world change. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Nate? Yep, thank you. Okay, so I don't, I don't know how much I'm on.